C3. Unit 9. Tape script 9.1. The Bear and the Travellers. 1. Where were the travellers walking? Along a country road. 2. Why were they going to the city? Because they were looking for work. 3. What did they see in the woods? They saw a huge bear. 4. What did the men do? One hid in a tree, the other pretended to be dead. 5. What did the bear do? It bent down, sniffed, then wandered away. Taped 9.2 the Bear and the Travellers Two travellers were walking slowly along a country road. They were going to the city because they were looking for work. They were tired because they had walked 20 miles and they were hungry because they hadn't eaten all day. Suddenly, in the woods in front of them, they saw a huge bear. The men were terrified. One of them ran away, climbed a tree and hid. The other man fell to the ground and pretended to be dead. He had heard that bears don't like eating dead meat. The bear came towards him. It bent down, sniffed him and whispered something in his ear. Then it wandered away. After the bear had gone, the other man came down from his tree and went to see how his friend was. He wanted to know what the bear had said to him. The bear gave me some advice, said his companion. He said, next time you go on a journey, travel with someone and one who won't leave you at the first sign of danger. The moral of this story is... Choose your friends carefully. Tapes 9.3 Questions and Answers 1. Why were the travellers tired? Because they had walked 20 miles. 2. Why were they hungry? Because they hadn't eaten all day. 3. Why did one of them pretend to be dead? Because he had heard that bears don't like eating dead meat. 4. When did the other man come down from the tree? After the bear had gone. 5. What did he want to know? He wanted to know what the bear had said to his friend. Taped 9.4 Pronunciation 1. They'd walked 20 miles. 2. One man hid in a tree. 3. The other pretended to be dead. 4. When the bear had gone, the man came down. 5. He felt bad because he'd left his friend. Tips 9.5 1. I was nervous on the plane because I'd never flown before. 2. When I'd had breakfast, I went to work. 3. I met a girl at a party. Her face was familiar. I was sure I'd seen her somewhere before. 4. I felt tired all day yesterday because I hadn't slept the night before. 5. My wife was angry with me because I'd forgotten our anniversary. 6. The little girl was crying because she'd fallen over and hurt herself. Tapes 9.6 The Boy Who Cried Wolf once upon a time, there was a shepherd boy who looked after the sheep in the hills near his village. 
He thought his job was very boring. One day, while he was sitting under a tree, he had an idea. He decided to have some fun. So he went down to the village and shouted, Wolf! Wolf! at the top of his voice. As soon as the villagers heard the boy, they stopped work and raced to the hills to help him. But when they got there, they saw nothing. They returned to their work. After they'd gone, the shepherd boy smiled to himself. A few days later, the boy did the same thing again. He ran into the village and shouted, Wolf! Wolf! The villagers didn't know whether to believe him or not, but they were worried about their sheep, so they had to help him. They went back to the hills. Again, there was no wolf. They were angry because the shepherd boy had lied again again, but he just laughed. Then, the next day, just as the sun was setting, a wolf really did appear, and it began attacking the sheep. In terror, the boy raced down the hill to the village, shouting, Wolf! Wolf! Although the villagers heard his cries, they did nothing to help. This time they really didn't believe him. The shepherd boy climbed back up the hill to look for the sheep, but the wolf had killed them all. He was so ashamed of himself that he sat down in the moonlight and cried. The moral of this story is, you should not lie. A liar will not be believed even when he tells the truth. Tip 9.7 Discussing Grammar 1. When I'd done my homework, I went to bed. 2. After I'd driven 200 miles, I stopped for a coffee. 3. As soon as she'd passed her driving test, she bought a car. 4. I didn't go to Italy until I'd learned Italian. 5. Although I'd read the book, I didn't understand the film. 6. His mother sent him to bed because he'd been naughty. 7. She'd burnt the food, so we went out to eat. 8. She cooked a lovely supper, but unfortunately I'd eaten a large lunch. Tape 9.8 My favourite writer Tom, you chose Charles Dickens as your favourite writer. Can you tell us a little about him? When was he alive? He wrote in the 19th century. He was born in England in 1812 and died in 1870. What did he write? What sort of books? He wrote novels and short stories. And tell us... Why is he famous? At the time he was writing, there was a lot of inequality between the rich and the poor. Dickens wanted to change society. He wrote about people who were poor and hungry or ill or who were unfortunate in some way. Dickens created some of the most famous characters in English literature. What are his best-known books? There are quite a few but possibly David Copperfield, which has a lot of autobiography in it, and Oliver Twist, and after that, A Christmas Carol. In this book, we meet a character called Scrooge. Ah, the man who hated Christmas. That's right. At the beginning of the story, Scrooge is a miserable character who refuses to spend any money to help his poor family. But by the end, he is a changed man, kind, generous, and full of love for people around him. What was Dickens' personal life like? Hmm, a mix of good and bad. His parents were poor. 
Dickens became very rich. He married and had ten children. Ten? Yes, but he left his wife because he fell in love with an actress. He didn't get divorced. In those days, it was impossible, absolutely out of the question. So there was a lot of sadness in his life. Oh dear, poor Mr. Dickens. Tip nine point nine. My favourite writer. Now, Alice, you chose Robert Louis Stevenson. Tell us about him. When was he writing? Well, he was born in eighteen fifty, and he died in eighteen ninety four. So he was writing just after Dickens in the second half of the nineteenth century. And what did he write? He wrote novels and poetry, and he was also a travel writer. Oh, quite a lot. Um, tell us why is he famous? Well, he isn't as famous as Dickens, but he's very popular because he's a great storyteller. His stories are about adventure, danger, and horror. His heroes are pure, and his villains are dark. What are his best-known books? There's a children's book called Treasure Island, and there's a travel story about going around France. But the most famous is the strange case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Hmm. And they, I suppose, are his most well-known characters. Yes, the book was an immediate success. It's about a man who has two sides to his character: one good and one bad. The man, Doctor Jekyll, has a battle inside himself. Between his good side and his evil side, this is the psychological idea of someone with a split personality. Yes, in everyday speech, we say about someone, "Oh, he's a real Jekyll and Hyde," meaning there are two sides to their personality. Fascinating. Tell us about his personal life. As a child, he was often ill. He married an American woman who had children from an earlier marriage. But they didn't have any children together. He travelled a lot to Europe and the United States. He died very young when he was just forty-four. Oh, well, thank you, Alice, for telling us about Robert Louis Stevenson. Taped nine point ten. The strange case of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, by Robert Louis Stevenson. London, eighteen eighty-six. One. Late one night, a lawyer, Gabriel Utterson, was walking home through dark, silent streets, when he saw a man attacking a woman. <coughs> <coughs> Utterson ran after him and caught him. The man's name was Mr. Hyde, and he looked ugly and evil. Two. Mr. Hyde showed no regret for what he had done. To buy the woman's silence, he wrote her a check. Give this to the wretch. Utterson noticed that the check was signed in the name of Doctor Jekyll, a well-known and and well-respected man. Three. Utterson was worried. He was Doctor Jekyll's lawyer and also his friend. He went to visit him. As soon as he mentioned Mr. Hyde, Doctor Jekyll turned pale and became angry. My position is very strange. I cannot explain. Utterson was confused. Who was Mr. Hyde? Four. A year passed. One night. An old man was murdered as he was walking home. 
A maid witnessed the crime and recognized the killer. Mr. Hyde had struck again. The police went looking for Hyde, but he had disappeared. Five. Again, Utterson went to visit his friend, Dr. Jekyll. He suspected that Dr. Jekyll had helped Mr. Hyde to escape. When questioned, the doctor replied in a strange, wild voice that Mr. Hyde had gone forever. Hyde will never return! Six. Over the next few weeks, Dr. Jekyll's behavior became more and more unusual. He locked himself in his laboratory and refused to open the door. His servants were worried. When they heard his voice, it sounded different. Go away and leave me alone! Was that my master's voice? <laughs> they asked Utterson for help. Seven. Utterson and the servants broke down the door. <laughs> Mr. Hyde was lying dead on the floor. It's Mr. Hyde! No, it's Dr. Jekyll! He had taken poison. But why was he wearing Dr. Jekyll's clothes? And where was the doctor? Were Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde one and the same person? Eight. On the desk was a letter addressed to Mr. Utterson. In it, Dr. Jekyll tried to explain himself. He said he believed that inside every human being, there was a good side and an evil side. Nine. Jekyll had created a potion. When he drank it, his whole body changed. God help me! I'm changing! The good, kind doctor became cruel, ugly, and evil. He called this other man Mr. Hyde. To change back, he had to drink another potion. Ten. But after a time, Jekyll found that he liked changing into Mr. Hyde. He enjoyed being bad. He became more and more violent and cruel. Take that! And that! He took pleasure in hurting innocent people. Eleven. Finally, Dr. Jekyll couldn't control Mr. Hyde anymore. He began to change into this monster, even without taking the potion. Jekyll hoped and prayed that Hyde would disappear. God, help me! But Hyde always returned. <laughs> Twelve. The potion to turn Hyde back into Dr. Jekyll no longer worked. It had lost its strength. Dr. Jekyll could no longer get rid of the evil Mr. Hyde. He had to kill this monster. But to kill Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jekyll also had to die.
I can live in this world no more. Taped 9.11 1. I was delighted because I'd won a thousand pounds in a competition. 2. I was stressed because I had ten bills and no money to pay them. 3. I was proud because I'd worked so hard and passed all my exams. 4. I was amazed because my teachers didn't expect me to pass. 5. I was upset because no one remembered my birthday. Taped 9.12 1. Sometimes I feel really lonely. Cheer up. You've got me. I'm your best friend. 2. I've got so much to do. Oh, and the baby's crying. Help! Calm down. You're so stressed. Chill out. Three. Guess what? I've just won £10,000. That's fabulous. I'm delighted for you. Can I have some? Four. When I watch the news on TV, I get scared. I know what you mean. The world's a scary place. 5. I get upset when people are so horrible. Yes, but people can be really nice as well. Tape 9.13 What an amazing film! I was scared. I was really scared. I was so scared. Taped 9.14 I was so surprised. It was such a shock. It was such an awful day. You have such crazy ideas. We had such terrible weather. There were so many problems. I've got so much work. Taped 9.15 1. That was such a good book. You must read it. I'll lend it to you. You'll really like it. 2. The film was so scary that I couldn't watch it. I hate the sight of blood and people killing each other. 3. Jane and Pete are such nice people. They're always so welcoming and pleased to see you. 4. But their children are so badly behaved. The parents have no control at all. 5. There were so many people at the party. I didn't manage to talk to everyone. 6. They made such a mess. I'm glad I didn't have to tidy up. 7. I've spent so much money this week. I haven't got a penny left. 8. I've had such an awful day. I need a drink to cheer me up. <laughs>